this video is going to go over some of the optimization techniques that Clelia uses, um, in particular um, the spatial data structures that it uses to organize um, the agents in space. Um, so these are um, the kind of different data structures that Clelia has built into it currently. Um, the array list isn't even a spatial data structure, but um, essentially it's just it's you know a storage technique where you're putting all of the uh, positions of the Clelia uh, into a single array. And so if you need to do, say, a nearest neighbor search within a given radius, then each agent is going to have to look at every other agent in the array to determine which ones are within its neighborhood. Um, this can get pretty complex because he, if each one has to look at every other one, then uh, the total complexity is going to be um, squared of the number of agents in the scene, um, which can get pretty high. In this case, there would be kind of 900 computations that would have to take place. Um, so what Quilia uses is a data structure called the spatial data structure, where it actually organizes the um, positions um, into kind of a, a data structure that's knowledgeable about the 3D uh, you know, space. So. The next one is a bin lattice, which is pretty much just an array of arrays. So it's like a 3D array of arrays, each array representing a dimension x, y, and z. Um, and this way, it kind of works like a hash map, where you look up the agent's position to determine uh, which bin to place it in. So once you've placed it in the bins, um, it's a lot faster to determine which ones you're going to have to look at. You can kind of you know you have you can ignore the ones that don't intersect with the vision radius uh, kind of circle here. Um, so you, you don't even have to look at these. And then you just have to look at the ones that do intersect. Um, so in this case, you're going to be looking at 14 um, potential neighbors, whereas here you had to look at every one, which is 30 potential neighbors. Um, so that's the bin lattice. And then the next one is going to be an oct tree. So an oct tree um, is uh, a data structure called a tree. And uh, in this way, it has you know each uh, you know level of the tree has a pointer to eight other um, trees, um, and it also partitions each level based on the density of points. So here you can see where we have a high density of points. It actually breaks it down a lot more. You know, same in this case. Um, and this way, you get kind of this you know, staggered um, tree structure that allows you to even further reduce the computation needed. So in this case, we look at the partitions that overlap with this circle, and now we can ignore these guys, and we're down to looking at nine potential neighbors. Um, and this is a, a, what's called a log n complexity um, search. Um, hopefully that, was, that wasn't that was too uh, complex. I think that was that's pretty understandable just a, a way of organizing your data spatially. And we'll look at how Quilia um, uses this um, in, in a data structure I call a dynamic spatial data structure. So here, um, I have a scene where I just have a scene of these are just particles, and they're being contained within this box. And we can see that Quilia, for its Quilia network, which is this spatial data structure, um, is using a list. And you can see a list, and even as you remove this environment and allow it to grow beyond it, it's continuing to use that list. However, once we switch to an agent, it's because agents often have to look at other agents in their vicinity, uh, and because we're using an environment, it's actually going to use a bin lattice. Um, so because we're in a fixed environment, um, the bin lattice performs very well here, um, and it's just divided it up into equal sized chunks. It's going to place each agent into its own chunk there. So that's the bin lattice. Um, if you were to remove the environment, um, then these things could grow very large. And if you remember here, um, there's actually you know, some empty partitions here. So you kind of have a lot of these empty partitions that take up a lot of space in memory, and also um, you know, which would kind of slow down your, your computation of the nearest neighbor search. So in this case, when I remove the environment here, it's going to switch over to an oct tree. And you can see it is now this dynamic oct tree 
structure that's continuously updating and dividing based on the density of agents in the list. And because it's dynamic, you can switch it on the fly. And it always uses the most optimal structure. Um, and there are further optimizations I can make. Um, but this, this shows um, kind of where it is currently. And, um, you know, so this is going to be very a very high performance. A lot of time was spent making sure that, um, you know, this thing would be able to run fast even with hundreds of agents in the scene. So in this case, there's 290 of them in the scene, and um, it has no problem. Um, you could probably even bump it up even farther. And you can see here it is building it on the fly. I love this stuff. <laughs> Hopefully um, this wasn't too uninteresting to everyone else, but um, I think it's really cool. So um, see you in the next video.